I don't know much about geography, but Excel does. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get Excel to put in information like this with just a couple of clicks. Before I show you how, please click subscribe so you can see future videos like this. Okay, are you ready to go into the content? Let's go. So on this spreadsheet, I've got a list of countries that I want to find out more information on. Before I use the feature, what I need to do is format this as a table. Next, I go to data, then I go to geography. Next to each country, there's a little map icon, and this tells me it's linked to an online data source. If I click on the little map, it will then bring up a display card that gives me information about that country. Now, if that's not impressive enough, let me show you what else it can do. You will now see this icon, which allows me to add a column. And when I click on this icon, it gives me a list of all the data fields that I can bring into this spreadsheet. For this example, I'm gonna select population. Let's resize these columns so we can see the population data. Let's look at another example. If I click here, add another column, and this time I'm gonna go for gasoline. It's one of my favorite ones. Which country do you think has the most expensive gasoline? Yep, it's the UK. Because it's formatted as a table, when it comes to updating, it's really easy. So I'm gonna add another country here. Press enter and it pulls through the information automatically. Let's add another one. Let's type in India, press enter, and it brings in the information. So really quick and easy to update if you format it as a table. Let's have a look at another example. We're gonna to go to cities now. So this is one that I've set up earlier. So you can see next to each city, I've got the map. As before, I could click on this little icon to bring in the information. But another way that you can do it is just by clicking into the cell, type equals, type in the cell reference for the first city, and it will bring up all the field labels. For this example, I'm gonna search for leaders, press tab to select it, and then press enter, and it will automatically complete those cells. Now there are a few errors, and that's because the online data source couldn't find any information for those cities. Now you can tidy up those errors by using an if error function. So if I click here, type in if error. At the end here, I'm gonna put in a comma, double speech mark, close the brackets, press enter. And where it finds those errors, it will now replace it with a blank. If I wanted to, I could manually complete these. There's not that many there, but uh, just to give you an example of how to remove those errors. Uh, it hasn't brought in the name uh, for leader, but I can just type in there, mayor. I think mayor sounds better anyway. And again, I can resize this column. How good is that? Let me give you another example. Now, sometimes when you add information, it will come up with a question mark like this. So next to Ealing, there's a blue question mark. And that's because Excel needs some help. So if I click here, on the right-hand side, Excel has found two Ealings. There's one in England and there's one in New Zealand. I didn't even know there's one in New Zealand. So I'm gonna press the one for London and it will update it and bring the information through. Now another way this can work, if I type in say Newcastle, so there's a lot of Newcastles in the world and if I press enter, it's automatically pulled in Newcastle upon Tyne. So it's been a bit clever. It sees that previous locations were all in England, so it's pulled in Newcastle upon Tyne in England. But what if I don't want that one? So what you can do instead is that you can type in Newcastle, put in your comma. Now I know there's a Newcastle in County Down. And if I press enter, it will bring the information through for that one. Here's another example for you. If I wanted to sort these countries by the GDP, but didn't want to display that information in the spreadsheet, I can do that. And here's how. I just click on the drop down, where it says display value, I just choose the data field that I want to use. So I want to choose GDP, and then choose whether I want to sort by the smallest to largest, or largest to smallest. So I'm gonna do largest to smallest, and there we have it. Now this information is linked to an online data source. To refresh this information at any point, you just need to go to data and then press refresh. If you like your keyboard shortcuts, you can also press Control, Alt, and F5 to refresh. How impressive was that? So cool, isn't it? Well, this is the video that I want you to see next, and this is what YouTube wants you to see next. And if you haven't already, then please click subscribe. I will see you in the next video.